As quilters, what's more fun than finishing a new quilt top? The fabrics have been cut, the blocks are pressed and trimmed, and now we get to decide how we're going to lay the quilt out. Now, these quarter log cabin squares are beautiful. They're vibrant and they're bold and they make a dynamic statement on their own. When I put them together though, they got a bit muddled and I couldn't quite see the individual blocks and I could not let that happen to these beauties. So I added a bit of a trim around them and what a difference it makes. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise and I am excited to show you the, the reveal of this wonderful log cabin quilt. It's a quarter log cabin block that we started last week and it is gorgeous. There are a couple layout variations that you can choose from but I chose the on point. I love on point quilts and those side setting triangles just make this particular quilt look really really great. I love how it turned out. So what I want to do is show you how this quilt goes together and how to set all the blocks and the corners and the triangles. It's a lot of fun. I think you're going to enjoy it. But first please give me a thumbs up and and subscribe i want to make sure you're with me next time for the next quilt that we make and stick around to the end because you'll see the the uh, whole quilt um at the end of the tutorial so you can see what it looks like and if you're interested in more on point quilting i do have a free pattern i'll include below the on uh, the all blocked in pattern and there's an on point quilt in there that shows you step by step how to do this as well so there's some information for you, but wait till you see this quilt. Let's go ahead and get started right now. I'm anxious to show you how it turned out. Just as a review, as we pick up from where we left off, we created large blocks. Essentially, it's a log cabin, but it's a continuous um, row around of kind of sort of the same color as opposed to dividing it by dark and light, etc. We're filling the block with color all the way around. 5 inch square in the middle, 2 and a half inch strips all the way around. And you can see we join these strips with a diagonal um, bias seam, a 45 degree angle, which meant I could use a lot more of my strips, just put them together, sew it, it goes a lot quicker. And when I was finished, this is about all I had of my strips or these pieces. So you can see as I was going, I was just joining them along and adding them to what's left and just go round and round and round. Now as I'm making these, let's see, where's an example here? Making these strips, I just sewed it together like this, just like you would for your seam binding. And look at the treasure trove of little half square triangles I have. So this is going to be something wonderful in the future. And this is when I talk about we cut our scraps into something, sew them, create new scraps out of what's left over. Well, here we go. So we get down to these little tiny pieces and isn't it fun to figure out what we'll do with that. So once we had these blocks, then we cut it into quarters and we came up with these. And this is what it, it looked like here. And so each of these four were relatively the same color scheme. And this is what we use to assemble the quilt. But the first thing I, I noticed is too many of these colors, when they were put side by side, didn't really have enough contrast to create a clear image of each individual block. So that's when I decided to add the lattice strip. And I put it on the top side because then when these all join down below, I'll have those lattice strips there. And once all the strips are done and the rows are put together, we need to create the half square triangles. So when these two blocks are put together, I need to have a half square triangle to even up my edge. And that's where we are right now, and I'm going to show you how this is going to go together very simply, very easily, just by putting these rows together, adding some of these triangles at the end, and I promise it's not going to be difficult. It may be a little fussy in spot, but it's not difficult if you take your time. So let's get started. With the large blocks made and cut into quarters, it's now time to trim these squares. Um, the large squares should measure approximately 20 to 20 and a half inches. And so each of these should measure between 10 and 10 and a quarter. Now, because 
Um, it's a large block. We're quartering it. There were so many seams. Chances are it's going to be closer to 10, and that's where mine are falling. Now, the best way to do this, I, I like using a square ruler. You can certainly do it on the grid, and I'm going to show you what we're looking for here. And it's probably easier to show you without the ruler reflecting on top. So if you put this corner, this is the center corner of our block, and we want to keep this. Trim will come off these sides over here. So we want to put this right in that corner and keep everything straight. But notice this um, edge of the fabric does not hit that line. And this edge of the fabric does not hit that line. So what we have to do is slide this up so it gets to that line and slide it over this way. Now, if we put our ruler down, let me just get my little ruler here. And we go across that. I can't see without putting my head under the camera. But essentially what we're doing is we're going to cut a little bit this way. I can do it easier this way because I can see. And so by lining it up this way right here, I can just go ahead and trim that piece off. And now I'm at the, the 10 inch line right here, okay? And I'm gonna turn my block this way because I can't see it that far over there. And again, so this is nice and straight, but I'm not on the line here. So I'm going to pull this edge so it's on my line Keep, whoops, keep this edge so it's on the line. And then I'm just going to trim this corner down. Now ordinarily I would use a larger ruler. Let me get this bigger one. Okay, so I'm going to line this up on the grid. We want right there. Okay, so now we know we have a good square. That's the first thing we're going to do. And then you come through and you find out, okay, what do my squares average? And in my case, most of them are anywhere from 10 to about 10 and a quarter. And in order to have enough um, seam allowance and to have all my squares the same size, I've selected to go with a 10 inch block. So what I'm going to do, actually I'll put it this way, I think that's the best way to see it, is I'm going to put this corner, let me think, I'm going to go this way. All right, we're going to go this way, and I'm going to put this corner on my 10 inch mark right here. So there's 10 inches, and here's 10 inches. So what I want to do is make sure this lines up right there and right here. Now that I've trimmed this corner, see how well that falls in there? It's kind of hard with all these crosshatch marks, but um, it, it is there. Now we're a little shy right here, but I can also see that that wasn't pressed real good. So that's more of a, a pressing issue than the fact that it's um, short. The other thing you want to look at is, are your seams relatively straight? If your block has to be like this in order to be square, you might want to think about it. That might be one to set aside and, and use for another project. But I've got my corner lined up here, and I've got this side lined up. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to pull that. I didn't do a very good job pressing because it wants to come down. But anyways, that's okay, it'll work. So I'm going to hit my 10 inches here and here. So now I have a nice 10 inch block. And when I go to sew everything together, this is what I want. I want to have 10 inches consistently on all my blocks. I am thinking I may add a little bit of a um, outer band here. I kind of like that idea, and I, I have some images I'm going to show you of some differences um, with the layout, but first we have to get everything trimmed before we can get to that point. So let's do another one. So let's do it with the large square. Just that's kind of what I'm used to doing, so I'm just going to sort of put it on my grid, 
get it up here. I think you should be able to see that. And first thing I do is I put this corner of the ruler in the corner of the block. And see, I don't have enough fabric. And again, see, you just can't see through that. I'm sorry. We need to go this way. It's just the square ruler makes it so much easier. I guess this is the best way. So if I put this right in that square, right here, and I line these up, this one does not come to the line, and this one does not come to the line. So again, I'm going to pull this up until those fit within the line, and that tells me this is what I need to trim. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll use my straight ruler here. I don't want to cut off more than necessary. Let's pull that over just a little bit. And that one's in. And there, okay. So I'm going to cut this one. Now this one, yeah, those lines are pretty straight. They're good. At first I thought it was looking a bit wonky, but I think I just had the ruler crooked. So it's not much that we're taking off, but I'm telling you, when we go to piece this, that little bit's going to make a difference, especially when we get some pieces, you know, that are close to a quarter of an inch. Um, it'll be really hard to square things up that way. So now what I'm going to do is, I need to stand up to do this one. And put that here and here. And I'm on my 10 inches. And see, just by trimming that little bit off, there we go, come on, all those little pieces, there we go. Um, and now I have a nice square. That corner is square. And I'm going to turn it around this way. This is where it's nice to have one of those um, spinning cutting boards or cutting mats. The rotating, it's like a turn style. You put it on, you just spin it around. But I don't know. I'm, I'm not into all that. I have enough a hard enough time keeping things straight <laughs> with where I am now. I don't have room for more stuff. So I want this to be 10 inches, and this is my 10 inch here and here. So I'm going to put this corner right on my block. And I'm not really using this line. That's just here for other purposes, but it does help to see that that's the 45, and that's where we want our opposite corner to be. And that's how we know that this is square. And I've just taped this so when we're looking at it on camera, um, it's more visible. But see how this corner is perfect? We've got our square right in there. We've got our 10 inch and our 10 inch. We have enough fabric. And look at how much extra I had over here. Whoops. There we go. Get everything lined up and run it across this way. All right. So I'm going to keep doing this. I'll do one more with you, just because they've been a little choppy getting through this. And uh, then I'll go ahead and get them all finished and get ready to put our quilt together. So I'm putting the corner, and again, see how these are short? They're not reaching the line. I'm going to pull it up just until they reach the line on the grid. So I know I'm within my 10 inch block that I want to have and I just measure it along my mat. We've got that. Like I say, it's not much, but it will matter later on. And I have to stand up for this. And here and here, there we go. And look, it's just a little bit. And now we have these wonderful squares. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish these up and then I'll show you what we're going to do on the next step. And here's my pile of trimmings. I want to show you how these blocks look and what the next step is going to be. So what we're going to do is cut the block, and I cut the block in quarters first. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to get each of these trimmed 
individually instead of trimmed as the whole block. This is a big block and sometimes the seams can waver a little bit and I'd rather trim the individual blocks than do the whole thing, then come in and cut it and have to retrim it again. So this is one block and what I want you to see is I've only trimmed three of them. What I'm going to do is I have, let's say I have nine of these and I'm going to take one out, which is going to be the untrimmed one, and then these are the three I'm going to use to make the quilt with. I'm just going to leave them in this pile right here as I show you these other blocks. Um, so these three are the ones that will be the quilt blocks, and then this is the one I'm going to use for the setting triangles on the side. So let's see, let's do another block here. So. This one goes this way, maybe? It's hard to tell. It really is like a puzzle. Okay, so I'm getting them right. Here we go. It's hard to show this after the fact. Okay, so there's another block, and it's been cut in quarters. And this one, and this one will go here. There we go. Got that one figured out. So there's one of the large blocks. And I tried to, there were some small pieces that I really wanted to have into multiple um, blocks. So I'd use the smallest ones in the centers. And I saved the longer strips that I had to go to the outer sides. And I tried to do some darks and then some lights, mid-tones in between. I don't really have a lot of, of heavily dark fabrics in here. And let's see, that's going to go this way. And that's not really a problem, but I am going to show you another view that you'll see kind of the situation I'm facing. So here's one. And you can see there's, there's a lot of places where it's angled and pieced together. And, you know, this switches to that. But that's fine because then they're all going to be cut into these these quadrants and uh, they're going to work beautifully. All right, so this one goes here. And let's see what we have. There we go, this one goes here and this one goes there. So there's another one with a lot of purples in there which makes it fun. And we've got this one. So I know you all didn't get to see the blocks last time, so I wanted to make sure that I could lay them out for you. And I figured out how to get more into the camera. That's the thing. I'm, I'm not a photographer or a videographer or whatever all those things are. I'm a quilter. So this is, this is all uh, <laughs> fun and games for me, figuring out how it all works. And let's see, put this one, I think that goes there. Nope, see this isn't matching up. There we go, that one goes there. And this one goes here. Oh my goodness, the last one gave me the most grief. And there we go, so here's another block. So I have nine of these. I'm going to take three of them and I'm going to put them in individual piles. And then as I'm quilting, I'm going to take all this pile and sew my rows. Then I'll take the next pile and sew my rows. That way, I'm going to get a good mix. Because if I have all, all three of them side by side, I don't want them to fall together in the quilt. So I think that's going to work best. And then these we'll do after the fact. And um, we're going to use that to make our corners. Now... There's a situation that I want to show you, and here's where we are. This is the way the quilt's going to go together. We're going to do this on point, and that means these are going to go corner to corner like this. Now I have a larger picture that I'm going to put on the screen that you can see, but the challenge that I have here is it's just not enough contrast. Everything blends in too much, and I can't see 
the individual blocks. Now, had I maybe gone light and dark and not done the crisscross, perhaps so, but I like this and I would do it this way again. What I am going to do is get a little narrow border to go around each of these. And I have a bunch of two and a half inch um, near solid pieces. And look at this. So if I put this right here, let's do these two. I'm trying not to get too much here. Let's see. This one will go right there. And then this one will go right here. And then we'll have a little block there. But see how that kind of breaks it up between and I would do it on, on just two sides of the block. So it would be here and here, and then this one would also have it, so that they fit together, and we're going to have that little bit of a lattice strip around everything. I think it's gonna work a lot better. It's a bit more work, and I need to get to it. So that's the next ch uh, challenge. Since I'm using two and a half inch strips, I ordinarily would have cut a one and a half inch for a lattice like that. But since I'm using two and a half, I'm going to cut them to one and a quarter. That means that the lattice itself will be three quarters of an inch. And when you have a narrow lattice like that, you need to really be careful of your seam allowances so that it doesn't waver or get narrow and wide and, and you know, kind of look like an hourglass. So there are some tricks there and, and I can talk to you about that. But let me go ahead and get this next step set up and show you where we're going from here. The blocks are cut, they're trimmed, and I have the first row of lattice sewn on. Um, and I wanna show you how I'm doing this. Now, I took a two and a half inch strip and I cut it in half to one and a quarter. And that's going to be fine, so that'll give me a three quarter inch strip. And the reason I'm doing it is just to add some delineation between the blocks because it is kind of monochromatic. There's not as, as much, um, what do I want to say, a contrast as I thought there might be. But that's okay. I love the way it's coming together, and I think this is really going to be special. Now, these strips are 42 inches long, and because these are 10 inches, I can do four blocks per strip, uh, per half strip, I should say, eight per strip. So that worked out really well. And I just sewed them all together at one time, and now what I'm going to do is cut them apart and add the second strip. So this is our corner that's not going to have the lattice, only the two outer parts with the longest logs. So start at one, go all the way through, then we're going to turn it 90 degrees and come down the other way. Now one thing I want to talk to you about is the quarter inch seam. And using a narrow strip like this, um, like I say, lattice, it's not really a sashing, so I guess we call it a lattice. And we want to be sure that we are pretty uniform along the way, because you see, once I get my, I'm at one and a quarter, I get a quarter inch seam and a quarter inch seam. All I have left is this little three quarters in there. And if my seams are wavy or hourglass or not even, it's really going to show. So if you decide to do it this way, you may want to go with a larger. Actually, um, you could just go ahead and put another um, strip all together around the entire block and just make that a very dark strip. And that would, you know, serve the same purpose. But that's not where I'm at, so I'm, I'm going to use this method. Now, I told you earlier that I um, trimmed three of the blocks. I showed you how to trim them down to 10 inches, but one out of each of the four blocks I left untrimmed. The reason being is when we sew our blocks together, we're going to need blocks for the side. We cut them in half, they'll be cut this way, and that will become our side triangle because this quilt is going on point. But because we're cutting it diagonally, it needs to be a little bit longer, a little bit larger. So what I'm doing, um, a couple different things, is I'm adjusting my seam allowance as well as the placement of my, my fabric strip, my lattice. So I'm going to put this right at the beginning. 
And notice how I'm setting this in just a little bit. And I don't need much, but every little bit that I add onto this block is going to make it work better. Now, I can go ahead and make all new blocks. Um, I actually had some extras made that I can cut into my triangles, but I just wanted to try this and I thought it would be fun to do because it makes sense. So what I'm going to do with this first block is set this in and take a scant quarter inch seam. That will leave me a little more fabric here when I cut my, my uh, block into the triangle that I will have that overhang that I need. And when I go to piece that, I'm going to show it to you and explain, you know, just what I'm talking about. And let me see. So I want to get in here and I'm just going to do a scant seam. I'm not doing the, the full quarter inch and I'm bringing this in so that I'm giving myself as much extra fabric as I can. And it's going to hold up well. It's not going to be a problem. These larger blocks that I didn't trim, many of them measured at least 10 and a quarter to 10 and 3 eighths. So I'm, I'm going to be fine there anyways. But every little bit helps. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that right down the center. And I've already sewn this side here like that and now I'll put this on. Now for these I'm going to take a regular quarter inch seam and line the fabrics up as I ordinarily would and put them right together and that way um, you know I don't have to worry about these not fitting well because by taking that full quarter inch seam it actually kind of snugs them up a little bit and tightens up the measurements. Now, when I sewed these the first time, this is all that I had left at the end of my, my strip. And because these, I'm adding extra widths because I have this strip on here now, I may have to do some finagling on some of these. I hadn't thought about that until just now. But that's okay. That's part of the, the creative adventure, isn't it? You know, find out what, what comes and figure out how to make it work. And I, I get a lot of comments from folks who say, oh, you know, I'm glad you show us how to figure that out. And it's like, part of the reason I enjoy quilting with you all um, in sort of my, what do I want to say, uh, jump in and just go versus having this elaborate plan is I just enjoy quilting. I enjoy the experience and I enjoy figuring things out. You know, what's going on, how it's working. Now, this is going to be the trick. Let's see if I'm going to have enough here. And, oh, look at that. Well, let's see. Oh, am I going to be off like by a quarter of an inch? Oh my goodness, look at that. I'm going to be off by a quarter inch. But I have a piece of this somewhere. Hold on, let me find it. Let me find it. It's the dark purple, and it's not that one. I have it here. Here it is. So I only need a little bit. I'm, gosh, that's a blue one. That, okay, I am going to hold off on this because I know I have a piece of this someplace, and I must have set it aside um, because I want to make it match. This would be kind of a, a funky thing to not have match. Um, you know, like we did here, but this this outside sashing is a bit more on the design level that I want to make sure that it it works okay and uh, it it fits well and everything goes together and I don't want it too chopped up. Look at that! Oh my gosh! Not even a quarter of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch. Oh. That's painful. Okay, I'm just going to stop here and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll do this one. So this is how I'm going to set all my, my squares together. And of course I could have put some of these a little bit tighter, but I just hate taking that chance. So I'm going to trim these apart, get them pressed, and then we're going to be ready to put the quilt together. So I'm going to get all my blocks done. And then I'm going to show you how this is going to work. And what I do want to show you is when we're adding these um, and sewing them together in the quilt block to block, 
is some of the methods that I use in order to um, keep this straight. And there are a couple different things we can do, but I'm going to show you what works for me. And just so you know, the other thing is I didn't want to use the same color because we have different colors on most of these. And I thought, you know, just changing the color a little bit would be fun. So let me go ahead and uh, get going here. I'll get these sewn and pressed and trimmed and get these little loose ends taken care of. And then we're going to make a quilt. We're almost there. And my blocks are finished. I have the narrow lattice on each piece on the two outer edges. And now I'm ready to put my block together. Now, I am going to make my quilt on point, but I wanted to show you another couple options for laying your blocks out. Um, with or without this extra lattice, the easiest probably way to make this is just to put each um, at at 90 degrees. So they all just stack like you would norm normally. You have your rows, you have your uh, your columns, you put them together and you have your quilt. And that's a very simple way. Now, a fun way to do it is to turn these and then you kind of create some really colorful blocks because now your strips are changing the probably most difficult part of doing it this way is lining all these seams up. That can get old really quick. But think about it. If you alternate your widths of your strips or make wonky strips where they're, you know, very irregular, you're probably going to be able to get away without matching too many seams. So this is what I wanted to show you. You know, you've got a couple options. Both are, are quite easy. This is going to be the simplest one. I am going to put this on point, and that's what I want to show you. Now, these are my blocks that I did not trim. So what I'm going to do is cut these and use them as my side setting triangles. So in order to do that, I'm going to set this on my 45 degree line. Now, a lot of times you have multiple lines. See where this shows that it's 45, this shows that you're 60, right there is 30. And depending on the quilt, if you're using a lot of stars, a lot of angles, things like that, that becomes really important. When you're working with a square and you want half of a square, 45 degrees is what you want. So I'm going to put this right on that line. Let's see, I'm looking for a place where I can line it up on a corner. And I want to make sure both corners, I'm going to bring it down here a little bit, both corners are on that line. Because that's going to be, you know, as square as this is going to get. So I'm going to put this like that, and then I'm going to cut it. Now, there are two ways we're going to need to cut these, depending on which edge of the quilt they're going to go on. When we do it this way, these are going to be the sides. Then I'm going to come back and do it this way, and these will be the top and the bottoms. But let's do the sides first, because I want to show you how this quilt is going to go together. So with those points on that 45 degree line, I'm going to set my ruler right there. And you see, I'm right at the 45 degrees, and I'm going to cut from one side to the other. And now I have a half, half square triangle, basically. But this is also called a side setting triangle. This is what we use to assemble a quilt when it's on point. And what that means is we're going to have two quilt blocks that go together like this. And we need to fill this in. So these, these all come together, and there's our quilt. But we have this gap. And what we're going to do is bring this piece in and sew it right on there. Now, this is where it became important. And of course, this is the wrong one. Can you tell that's the center? The centers need to go down. So that's the other thing. You need to make sure that you get it in the right direction. And the other way that I knew is I didn't have that strip there. 
So instead of having two strips together, we want to make sure we have a single strip all the way around. Now, the other thing is because we are using um, 10 inch blocks, we need to make sure that these extend out. And this is where that, th that 3 eighths comes in. This corner here needs to extend out 3 eighths of an inch. That way when we go to sew it, that corner will be there and then we have our quarter inch seam all the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble some of these blocks and show you how we're going to put the quilt together. I also want to show you how to keep a really consistent um, edge right here. Um, what do I want to say? When you're sewing your seam allowance, we want to measure from this seam instead of the outside seam because when you have a very narrow lattice like this, it's going to show if you slowly kind of come in at an angle because there's so little there, any variance is going to be visible. And what we do basically is we line up along this line and then we sew and make sure we stay consistent all the way through. So I'm going to show you some of that here and um, then we're going to get this quilt together. So I need to get some strips cut and I need to put my rows together and then we're going to have a quilt. We're getting close. All right, so we talked about cutting the block in this direction. The other direction we're going to need is from side to side versus from the corner to corner. So let's set this one and we're going to do the same thing here. And I'm just going to go from point to point and just like this. And then we're going to cut it across. And there we go. Now, what I want to show you is how this works with the block. So we have a block right here, and we're going to put this one right there, just like this. And you should be able to see that, I think. And if I move these out of the way, now we're going to put a block here. Now, what I want you to notice is that these, well, these aren't the same block, are cut at a different angle. So this one goes corner to corner, and this one goes from side to side, because this is the end, kind of the end of the corner, and then we're going to take another one and put it right here. And this is how we're going to get our corner, just like this. You know, it's really good to find out what is the mistake you make all the time. What's that little idiosyncrasy that you do that, as long as you're aware of, you can fix the problem? For me, it's this. I will sew along quarter, quarter, quarter. I get to the end of the seam and I start veering off. And I do this so often, even though I know I do, and even though I try not to, it's just one of those things. I guess I'm in a hurry and I'm ready to be done and I pull it off the side. So with that said, um, that's just something to kind of keep in mind. But I just wanted to show you how this goes together. And actually, that's what I, we were doing. Let me get back. I digress. Excuse me. I, I kind of got... Um, off on a segue there. So we're going to sew this. Now what we're going to do as we're sewing is we want to take our quarter inch here. Generally when we're using a quarter inch seam we are aligning this side of the fabric to some measuring device whether it be your presser foot or your throat plate or tape whatever happens to be there. In this case, because it's particularly narrow, you want to measure against this seam. And that's going to make sure that you consistently are at the same distance all the way through. So your narrow strip is going to be the same. Now, in this case, everything's cut pretty straight, so it's not that big of a deal. But sometimes it can really matter. And the narrower you get, the, um, let's see, where does this go? The narrower you get, 
the more chance you have of having a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this, but I'm going to show you while I'm sewing it so you can get an idea of how this works. And then we're going to get this quilt finished. Oh, I can't wait. We're getting so close. When setting a quilt on point, what that means is we are staggering the blocks so that we have an edge that looks like this with a triangle opening. And what we need to do then is come back and add what's called a setting triangle, which is a half block. And the angle at which you cut it, whether it's through this center or what I call side to side, is going to depend on where it's being placed on the quilt because one side of our blocks our centers go in this corner whereas when we're doing it from the other direction it's going to go the other way and the opposite side of the quilt will be exactly opposite of this because those corners will be over here and so for me I like to do one row at a time and I lay it out on the table as I'm going now my design walls down right now um, remodeling but I'm getting the um, rows put together one at a time which is my preference because in doing so I can then add whatever um, corner I need as I'm going and then I can sew everything together at one time now a couple points about this we want to line this seam up here that's going to be the most important because that's where we're going to join to the next seam um, to add this to the quilt. Then secondly, because we're cutting this on an order on a uh, angle, don't even try to line anything up here. Most of this is going to be cut off and we want it to extend because we need to have that extra um, extension to make our our point remember when we're when we're doing a triangle we need that extra 3 8 inch instead of just a quarter inch in order to have that point have a nice sharp edge or a nice sharp point on on the quilt and that's that's what we want to look for so what i'm going to do is just add this like 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 so actually you know what i'm going to do the other side first because what i want to show you is how to sew your strips well I guess this is going to go the same direction too okay I guess it doesn't really matter so what I'm going to do is sew it from the underside because that's where the strip is and this is what I want to show you about how to um, get your nice even piece I know I've mentioned it a num number of times because it's pretty important so I'm lining the strip up with the block and I'm going to let all this just fall as it will because these are extra pieces and strips that were added on and I didn't trim all those down to the exact size because I thought I might need it for the, um, you know, the extra length for my, uh, my trim in order to fill out the block and get that 3 8 piece that I need. All right, I know I'm fussing with this. There we go. And I have plenty of fabric up there. So I'm going to line this up here so I'm nice and straight. And I'm just going to start quilting all the way up here. But what I want to show you first is I'm not going to line my fabric up with my presser foot or with my guidelines as I normally do when I'm quilting. Instead, what I will do is I'll, I'll put myself where I know I need to be and then I'm going to gauge from here over. So this seam, let me get a little ruler here. This is my quarter inch seam. So if I put one inch right there, there's my quarter inch seam. Now that leaves me a remaining one inch. Remember these strips are one and a quarter inches. So we've taken a one inch seam allowance and that leaves us an inch. We want to take a quarter inch seam, so we need to come over three quarter inches from right here. Now, what I'll do is line my needle up with the ruler with where I want it to be, which is right on this three quarter mark. 
and I'll get it nice and straight and put it there. Okay, and then I look. Okay, see where my pressure foot is? Let me lower it. Where my pressure foot, <laughs> I can't talk, sorry. Where my pressure foot is. I've got uh, my ruler lined up with the needle. I'm on one inch here, and that's right at the quarter inch. So this little bit, it's probably closer to about, what is that, 3 sixteenths. Um, and you don't have to worry about what the number is. It's a visual thing. Just look at it. And you, you can see it's going to be a little bit bigger than this width right here. And if I have something to compare it to, I also want it to be a little narrower than this. So as long as I'm right in this range, then this piece, this strip, will be nice and even all the way through. We don't want any waving around or anything like that going on because it, it does become visible with narrow strips. You don't have as much of a, uh, what I like to call my fudge factor. All right, so we're going to put this here and get adjusted. So I know I'm going to sew right about there. So I'm going to come up here and just get started. Okay, so see, see my space right there. I'm going to work on maintaining that space throughout the block. I'm just getting my other end set up. So as I'm going, oops, I caught my thread there. Let me just trim that. I don't always like to use a seam ripper here because I'm afraid I'm going to poke a hole in my nearly finished quilt block. I can't get that thread. There we go. It's right there. Okay. There we are. And there's always a little glitch here and there, and we just work through it. All right, so I'm going to continue. And notice I'm keeping this nice and even, so it's nice and straight. And I'm just going to keep this lined up. There we go. Oh, getting a little bit off. I want to keep that. Now it may look like I'm getting narrower, but this is actually curling up a bit. So let me hold it open. And you can see, so all the way through, I stayed right on my, my uh, point. And I'm just going to cut this point off now. Um, I've left a lot of them on the quilt as I've sewn it, just so I can show you. Because those are the points that are creating the angles that we need. So now, when I open this up, okay, nobody saw that, right? Oh my goodness, every one of them. Oh, so do you know the quick way to do this? This makes me crazy. I was so focused on my strip, I wasn't even thinking about these. So what I do is, you know how that camera's in my eye again, um, is I just take, I cut the thread at the end, well, maybe if I can, I'll cut it right here where it joins at the seam and I'll cut it right here and then all I have to do is flip this over. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on all three of these. I can't believe I did all three. Oh my goodness. Well, as you can see, if you're only paying attention to one thing at a time, you're not going to get very far. There's a lot going on when you're quilting and a lot of little details to think about. I think I can see it better on this side. That fabric has such a light backing that I can't really see what I'm doing. Oops, where we go? Right here. Okay, so here we are. And I'm just going to pull this down. Oh, this got a double, double whammy with that folded over. I'm going to pull it both ways to keep it straight. And I get it nice and flat. There we go. So that one's nice and flat. And this one's nice and flat. And did I get that one? Yeah, that one's nice and flat. So all I'm going to do is pick up in this spot here. There we go. And I'm just going to quilt over it. Now, I go just to the inside until I get to that point where I'm sewing over what I'm replacing because I don't want to change that seam allowance dimension. Not that that little bit would make much of a difference. Okay, now this is how it's supposed to look. There we are. Oops, did I bang the... 
Was that the camera? Sorry if I did. Um, and just pull out some of these threads. Oh my goodness, look at this. Okay, so I promise this looks great. I love it. But see how nice, nice and uh, even that looks. And if you get, you know, really particular and get your ruler out. Now it is going to come out just under three quarters because we have the roll of that fabric as, as it folds over. So you're looking at probably closer to, I don't know, um, five eighths, I guess. So, but see how nice and even we're, we're getting right to that. There's three quarters and there's five eighths. And I'm pretty much getting that all the way along. So that was a success despite all those flip seams. So now I'm going to do the other one and I'm going to do it from this side. That way I'll be sewing down and I won't have a problem with these seams. The other thing, because when I'm, I'm doing this, I like to start from the point where I know I need the accuracy. And this is where it's going to join the rest of the quilt when the rows are sewn together. Whereas down where the points are, I'm going to have more um, flexibility with trimming. Now, I know, because I've been working on this quilt for a bit, where my seam allowance needs to be with these trimmed, uh, these, uh, what do I want to say, the lattice strips. So I'm going to go ahead and just buzz on through here. And then when I get to the end, make sure that I have... I think I may have gotten a little wide there. I don't know. We'll see. And let's see. Keep this straight. Okay. So now when I open this one, I get my ruler. So again, we have, we'll put this on one inch. So we have, we're at 5 eighths, pretty much right there. We've got 5 eighths there. I think I got thinner up here. No, it's right at 5 eighths, just inside of it. So, you know, not even a 16th of an inch. And I call that a success. That's awesome. All right, so this is how you're going to do every row. This quilt, um, the center row that is your longest single row is seven blocks. Then on each side of that, we're going to have a row with five blocks, then a row with three blocks, and then a, this row with a single block. And that's why I showed you on this one, simply because it's, it's easier to manage. And, you know, we can just use a single block and you can see how we get our triangular shape. Now, when this is joined, forgive all these threads, my goodness. Um, when this is joined to the quilt, this is the edge that will join up to the previous row that has three of these blocks. So now this is going to become my corner, but we've got a blunt end here. And I sh as I showed you, um, we're going to take one of our blocks that we use, and this doesn't matter which way it's cut, because it's, it's going in um, on the bias, and it's going to not line up with anything. So what I do is because I want this to be centered so that this corner is actually at the outer corner of my quilt. And I'm just going to line this up. Don't line these corners out here. Line this one here because that's the center. And then just go ahead and put your edges straight and give yourself a little fold mark. I'm just gonna put a pin in there so I don't lose it. And then I'm going to do the same thing right here. Now remember, your block goes from here to here. Don't measure to the outside because that's part of this block. Your block only has a lattice on one side. So you're going to fold this over and join it here to find your center. And let me give that a good good press so I get a corner in there and you can hard to see because that's dark fabric and it's right there okay there we go as I speak with a pin in my mouth all right and look at that let's try right sides together what do you think you didn't tell me Nobody said, hey, Leah, pay attention to what you're doing. 
Okay, this will work better. Now, I am going to sew from the other side. Two reasons. Number one, keep my um, lattice uniform in size, but also because this is on the bias. And you're more apt to stretch a bias cut if you're sewing it on the top side. If it's on the bottom, the feed dogs are going to pull it along nicely, whereas if it's on the top, sometimes this pressure foot can cause it to drag a little bit. And so you're just going to run this off. Now, what I am going to do is see, yeah, okay, that's good. It just looked particularly wide. I wanted to make sure I had that at an accurate dimension. And I've got my thread. Oh my goodness, I pulled the thread out. All right, I'm going to hit pause for a moment because I can't thread the needle with the camera right here. I'll be right back. All right, I think now we're ready to go. Let's try this again. So I'm going to line this up. I know where I need to be on my quarter inch. Let me just make sure. That's all. I'm going to trim that off. That's really wide. There we go. All right, so I'm going to line this up, put it on the edge of my block underneath. Lots of little bits and pieces floating around here. Okay, so ready to go. And we're just going to sew from one end to the other. Just like this. And I'm sewing these seams outward. Simply because, well, you know, this one I'm going to take it in. Because if I sew it this way, I have a lot of seams I'm going to be pressing against. This way, there's no um, seams to worry about. So I'm just going to go ahead this way. I think this will work out. And there we go. All right, so now we have a corner unit, and it's looking wonderful. So we have our block, we added sides, now we added the corner piece. Now I won't trim these until I trim my entire quilt, because I'm going to want to make sure all these sides are nice and straight. Um, but this is going to work perfectly. One thing I do want to show you now is how to attach this to the quilt. And I have the quilt right here. So here's my row with one, two, and three blocks. It has a corner piece here with a triangle, with a setting triangle, and it has a corner piece here. So we have our three blocks and our two setting triangles. So this is just the same as we did just did with the single block. But now I'm going to add the single block to this to get me to my corner. And what I'm going to do is pin all this together. And remember, you want to line these up so that they fit in the right place. We don't want to like get this one offset over here. So let me go ahead and get this all ready and then we'll come back and uh, sew this together. All right, we're ready for action. We have thread in the needle. We have a needle, we have fabric, we have a quilt. I'm going to line this up here. And so this is this is the top of the row that just has a single block. And the single block has a corner on each side. And now I'm just going to add the corner. And what I'm going to do here, just like I, we did with the other one, I folded the center, I found the middle. I'm going to tuck this in, make sure there's no seams I have to worry about, no seam allowances that need to flip, and just let this lay naturally where it wants to go. And I'm just going to take a quarter inch here. That's going to be pretty safe. I do have the um, trim on the under underside, but I don't think that's going to be a problem here. And look at that. And I'm messing it up. No, I didn't. I did pretty good. Okay. I thought I was twisting that seam allowance over. So I'm just going to start here and start just off the edge and then work my way back into the seam. Okay. And we're nice and even now. I don't know, this just be a shadow, but it looks like that's kind of curling over on me. Okay, I'm done. I'm over. 
think we're past it. Let's move on and we'll get this finished. And we're going to move forward all the way to the end, making sure I don't have anything underneath. But nothing's worse than getting across the seam, finding out that a corner from another part of the throw has tucked itself up under where you're sewing. And then, oh my goodness, that's annoying. Now, I'm coming up to a busy little corner here. We have our sashing. Our, our, our lattice, excuse me, lining up with a block here, and we have sashing, and you see these don't even line up. That's okay, because they can't. This is cut on a bias, it just won't work. Well, it probably could with a lot of math and a lot of effort, but we're not going there. So I'm just going to lay this in line and let it fall naturally the direction it wants to go, and hold everything in place, and just so. And that little bit that was um, on that lattice is going to all but disappear. So once this is trimmed, that's going to be within my quarter inch. And that's going to mostly be in the binding. There might be this tiniest little bit. And you know what? That looks like another row. So these little things, you know, don't worry about that. Those little bits, those don't count. It's the big pieces that you want to really look beautiful and stand out. And that's where we are. So here we are. This is it. We have a wonderful quilt on point. I'm going to press this and lay it out for you so you can see the whole thing. What a great, fun quilt this is. I love it. All right, let me get going so I can show you some more. And here's the finished quilt. I think it turned out fabulous. I love the colors and that lattice makes all the difference in the world. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me this long. I know this was a an extended video, extended tutorial, but there was just so much information I wanted to share. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again soon. I'd love to see your quilts if you decide to make the uh, the quarter log cabin yourself. It's a fun, fun pattern. Enjoy your day. Thank you again for being here.